Let's take our Bibles and let's go to, let's go back to 1 Corinthians 12 and then we'll have a word of prayer and we'll get into the scripture tonight. Boy, that's good rain we had, amen? That's, uh, that's that kind of uh, showers that God talked about where he talked about his doctrine coming down as the gentle rain. Don't want it in big fierce torrents. Just want a good soaking, what they call a soaking rain. Good gentle rain. That, that'll teach you that not everything that you're going to learn about God is all going to come in one day. Because if it did, we'd waste most of it. We'd forget it. And uh, God has helped me over the years and He has shown me that what He teaches me, He's going to teach me little gently, little gentle showers at a time. He's going to give me this and that's going to help me grow a little bit. Let that sink in and give me some more and let me grow a little bit and let that sink in and that's how He does it. And uh, there's part of uh, what we're going to, we're going to end up in Romans tonight uh, after we read this, but there's part of this that has to do with um, how God works in His body and what to expect from God, what He expects from us. Okay? And that's going to help us tonight. So, 1 Corinthians 12, we'll just read a little bit out of this and then we'll move to Romans 12. And let's go to the Lord in prayer. And I appreciate everybody being here tonight, everybody online. We're glad that you, uh, glad that you came. Heavenly Father, Thank you, Lord, for a good day. Thank you, dear God, for giving us some good rain and um, just those gentle showers, Lord. We know, Lord, it's going to fill those wells back up. It's going to make that grass grow real good and make it nice and green and even and make everything pretty again instead of all brown and dry. And, Lord, we, probably every one of us, have been in seasons like that where we've been dry and not a lot of rain going on, not a lot of growth going on. Father, just as you were in control of how long it didn't rain here and how long it did rain here, Lord, we understand that you're in control even of the dry spells of our life. And Lord, you'll let us go dry and you'll let us kind of do without for a while. And it'll make us appreciate, Lord, the things that you give us. It'll help us to not take them for granted. Father, just give us wisdom tonight. Just fill us with how good you are and how good, Lord, our life can be if it's resolved under you, Lord, if it's settled under you like our account is. And Lord, just teach us some good things that will help us in life. Everybody here and everybody listening, Lord, is just in a little bit different area of life, going through different things. And uh, so, Father, I pray, dear God, that the word that goes forth tonight would be beneficial to all. Bless us tonight. And thank you, dear God, for being good to us. We love you in Jesus' name. All of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Uh, 1 Corinthians 12. Let's pick it up in uh, verse 12, where it says, For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body. So also is Christ. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. The foot shall say, Because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, Because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? The whole body be, it were an eye, where were the hearing? The whole were hearing, where were the smelling. And now that God set the members... And by the way, that just tells you that there's always going to be some people in the church that smell. Really good. Okay? God made them that way, alright? Verse 18, But now hath God set the members, every one of them in the body, as it hath pleased Him. Underline that. Okay? Because that's going to be... He's going, to, he's going to tie that in in Romans 12. As it hath pleased Him. You need to ask the question in life. Who am I here to please? Okay? 
Uh, I don't have a problem trying to make people happy. I like it. That's I get a lot of satisfaction out of that. I like it when people laugh at my stupid jokes. And the, and because that's why I tell them, because people laugh at them. Might as well bring a little laughter onto the scene. I like to make people happy, but my primary obligation is to please the master of whom I am a servant. I have a boss, a man that I answer to, and I'm going to answer to him. And to be honest with you, there's part of it I'm not looking forward to. Okay, It's like when the boss calls you in and you're going, what did I do? Okay, And that's how it's going to be. But ask the question, what, what, what is my life spent pleasing? Am I out for myself? Am I out for my own interest? Or am I out for the interest of God? And it's real easy, now listen now, it's real easy to mistake the two. Because what we like to do is do our own thing and pretend like it's serving God when God didn't have anything to do with it. Okay? And there's different ways you can tell, and I'm not going to get into all that tonight, but there is one way that you can tell. All right? So, uh, keep that in mind. Let's go, to, let's go ahead and go to uh, Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. God has set the members, every one of them in the body, as it hath pleased Him. I went backwards. Romans 12. Here we go. And we're pretty much, I'm going to try to run through this whole chapter tonight. And uh, <clears throat> just, just let God minister to you. So remember that, uh, number one, your, your own physical being is the body of the Lord. It is the temple of God. Number two, the family unit is a body. Okay, uh, Husbands... Being the head of the family, that husband should be submitting to the Lord who is the head over all the heads. Remember this in the Bible, that for every position of authority and every office, Jesus Christ sits in the chief office of every one of those. There are apostles, Jesus is the chief of those apostles. There is the foundation of the church. Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone of that foundation. There are angels. He is the angel of the Lord. Okay? There are uh, priests. Jesus is the high priest. There are bishops. He is that great bishop and shepherd. All right? So, and with, he is king of all kings and lord of all lords. So, if there is a head anywhere in any kind of group situation, Christ should be the head over that head. Always. Things will not be right until Christ is in charge. Can I get somebody to say amen? Okay? So keep that in mind. So, what is, what is our physical body for? What is our family for? What is this church group for? Um, this will work in our community. This will work in our country. This will work in the job situation. I mentioned Jared uh, this morning when somebody comes into work not all there and it could be because they were out all weekend or it just could be they were sick and they decided to come into work anyway because they didn't they just couldn't afford to be out or didn't want to leave everybody out. It is, befalls on everybody else to try to pitch in and pull up the slack from that one guy that's lacking. Okay? They do that, number one, for the job's sake, uh, because that will benefit them in the end. But number two, if these guys work together really well, they'll do it for one guy one day, because them guys will be there the next day for you who are not doing well one day. Okay? And it's supposed to work that way. It's supposed to work that way in a family. Mom does a lot in the house. When mom's not feeling well, it shouldn't be still up to her to do everything she's doing, plus not be, not be well. The house should chip in and help out and take up some of that stuff. 
That's good. That's good, Mike. Mike, that's good preaching. We like that, amen. Okay? And you watch this. Read, read Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your what? Bodies. Now, what does he mean here? Does he mean just our physical? Or He said bodies, plural. So can we not apply that to every one of these situations? Every one of them. You present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, means clean, pure, except, and by the way, pure in motives. If you're gonna if you're gonna do something for somebody, and you're expecting a payback, keep it. Keep it. Don't want it. I don't want to. I, you, nobody wants to owe you anything, because there are people I know. I have known people that they'll do anything in the world for you, and they will hold it over your stinking head the rest of your life. Okay. I would just soon not have any favors done by people like that. Amen. Okay? You just keep it. Your body is a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable. Here it is, unto God. Remember, it's pleasing God. God is your primary motivation. Are you serving God or are you serving yourself, putting God's name on it? Acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. He's not asking you to do anything. And he said a living sacrifice, which takes away the idea that we have to go hang on a cross for God's sake. He did not ask us to kill ourselves for God. He did not ask us to go like they do in the Philippines. Those Roman Catholics out there in the Philippines, every Easter, the people will drag a literal cross down the streets of Manila, and then they will lay down on it and have people nail them, hands and feet, to that cross and hang up there and agonize for Jesus. He did not tell us to do that. Okay, that is a word. They're saying... If I do this, God will be pleased with what I'm doing. What's works? Salvation. Okay? Catholic Church is all about that. He's not asking you to do anything unreasonable. He's asking you to be reasonable. This is a reasonable service that He's asked you to do. Um, verse 2, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So if you're going to please God with your body, which means your personal being, it means your family, it means your church. If you're going to please God, there must be a mind renewal. The only way to have your mind renewed is by putting new stuff in it. Garbage in, garbage out. Right? Okay? So what you put in is what will come out. Feed yourself on the Word of God. You will be pleasing to God. Because if you'll believe it, uh, uh, Hebrews 11 said, Without faith it is impossible to please God. That's how Enoch was raptured. He believed what God said. He, he had faith and he believed what God said. So, but it takes a mind renewal. Quit thinking the way you used to think and start letting God change thought processes in your mind and in your heart. By the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good an acceptable and perfect will of God. Now I'm going to throw something in here that I've heard taught, and I, I'm not going to tell you what I think about it yet. See where it says that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What is the difference between what's good and what is, what is acceptable and what is perfect? Anybody know? Where it talks about the will of God. Are you in the will of God? Are you in the good will of God? Are you in the acceptable will of God? Are you in the perfect will of God? Is there a difference in any of those three? You say no? Melissa says no? Anybody say yes? Yeah. I guess. Because perfect is different than being accepted. Jared? I think there's a difference. Okay. Because... Um, You just dug it. Okay. Abel's sacrifice was accepted. Cain's 
was not totally. There, there was a, a 180 degree difference between Cain and Abel. God did not partially accept Cain's sacrifice. He totally rejected it while he accepted Abel's. Let me tell you what I think. Want to know what I think? I'll tell you tomorrow. I'll tell you what I think. I have heard from people, and I, I, was, I was taught this a time or two, uh, years gone by, that you can be in the acceptable will of God, but not be in the perfect will of God. Okay? When I look at this passage, and you think about how God sees things, not how we do it. Okay? If I mowed the grass when I was a teenager, my dad would say, well, it's acceptable, but it ain't perfect. When they brought animal sacrifices to the high priest and he was going to either accept it or reject it if he accepted it it had to be perfect when God accepts something it is 100% perfect and if God says something is good there is no bad in it do you see that? Okay. So I see all three of these together. That you, there is one will of God. One way. There is not an allowance for you to be part in God's will while partially you're doing what you want to do. I'll say this. If you find, it's like I prayed a while ago. We went through a long dry spell here. That grass, you should have seen it two weeks ago. That grass was as brown as that tree bark out there. Okay? We went through a long dry spell. Who did that? Did the uh, New World Order Illuminati cloud cedars make it not rain here? No, God's in charge of the rain. Amen? Okay? And in your life, you will be in dry spells. Who took you there? Every day that Israel was in the wilderness, not one day did they ever move out on their own. Not once. In 40 years, not once did they go out on their own outside of God either staying His cloud or moving His cloud. They followed that cloud. If that cloud stayed, they stayed. If that cloud moved, then they moved. They were always, and sometimes God led them through temptation. He led them through trial. He proved them. He tested them. God will do that. God will lead you through dry spells. But He's training you. He's teaching you. He's teaching, well, it's like I said a while ago. You appreciate, we appreciate this rain because we ain't had none for a while. Okay? Now it's starting to look pretty nice out there. Okay? And what happens is, God, for whatever reason, He will lead you through areas of life to teach you things, to show you things. But every one of them is always in His will. So I believe in God's superintendence, God's supervision, God's governance. He is really the King of kings and Lord of lords. And even if there's a king or a president or a governor or somebody that we don't like, God's in charge. The Bible's very clear on that. Nobody rules in this earth without God saying so. Nobody does. So I see them, all three together, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect. He does not say or perfect. And, and, and. Good and... Ex so I didn't crack your egg, did I, Jared? No. All right, good deal. All right, good deal. Appreciate that. All right, now, verse 3. For I say... Through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. Big problem with us Americans. Read up with it. We think very highly of ourselves. American pride, they call it. Okay, USA, USA. Okay, when we can beat the Russians at something, or the Chinese, we're just giddy. Okay? But we, at, we, that's just how we are. I mean, that's just kind of how we were raised. We're just raised individualism and, and freedom and liberty and don't tread on me and don't touch me and don't take my gun away from me. Okay? 
We sometimes, we do think more highly than we ought to think. And it is bad in American churches. It is awful. Even in fundamental, in fact, I would say especially in fundamental churches. The more fundamental it is, the higher the stink of pride and, and high, thinking highly of themselves. These guys that want everybody to call them doctor, so and so. The preachers, who is, that's Dr. Simmons, that's Dr. Jones, that's Dr. Smith. Huh? Clapjaw. Dr. Clapjaw. I forgot about him. Okay? I, listen, I didn't like that. I, when I was at Free Will Baptist Bible College, they had the, some of the professors had doctorates, and we had to call them Dr. That's Dr. Uh, Portail there. That's Dr. So-and-so over here. I just, man, I hated that. That just, I did not like that. And, and I still don't to this day. And I have been offered a doctorate. Honorary. And I've, tur I've turned it down three times now. Same one. I've turned it down. I don't want it. Oh, this, this might help your ministry. No. I don't think it will. I think it will hurt it. Especially with me saying all this stuff about doctors. Amen. Okay. <laughs> it will hurt it. <laughs> now I'm Dr. Clapjaw, right? <laughs> there is a solution to this. There is a solution to this. But to think soberly. Number one, that means don't drink. Number two, that means have a gravity in your mind, a seriousness about who you are. You're thinking straight about who you are and who God is. Okay? Remember the plumb line? When God said, I set a plumb line and miss my people, God's plumb line is always straight. Never, never crooked. You can't mess with gravity. It's always going to be right. When we measure ourselves among ourselves, we might see that we might be more straight than somebody else. When we measure ourselves up against God, it's never right. We're never going to be right. Never. Ever. So if you keep that in your mind, my job as a watchman is to stand on the wall, look out, see what's going on, and say, that's wrong, that's, that's coming, be, be watching for this, that's dangerous, be careful of these people over here, they're going to they're gonna try to subvert, they're going to try to subdue, watch out for these, pre these kind of preachers over here. I mean, that's the position that I'm in. And it is f because, as a watchman, you have to put yourself up here in order to see the best. Sometimes that's where my mind is. Up here. And then I, when I start looking down at all, everybody, look at what these people are doing over here. Boy, I'm not like that, am I? Amen. Boy, I'm glad I'm not like that. Then I'm like those Pharisees that were saying, Lord, I thank you that I'm not like these people over here. And I, deal, I have to deal with that. So anyway, he said, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Every man has a measure of faith. Depends on how much you need. Some need more than others. Some need more grace than others. Some people need more forgiveness than other people. Right? You believe that? Yeah, I mean, it's all the same, same blood, same cross, same all that stuff. But it's just, there's just some people that's going to trip seven times a day. And some that's going to trip one. And seven times a day they're going to need forgiven. Seven times a day God's going to have to pick them back up. Okay? If you're one of these people, watch this now. If you're one of these people who needs forgiven one time a day. And here's this person over here who needs forgiven seven times a day. Here's how you look at it. You were both on the same floor falling before God. Meeting at the same cross, receiving of the same blood and the same forgiveness. What difference does it make who had to get more of it per day? Okay? Who, takes, who in here takes medication every day? Okay? I've had to take, there's a medicine I take for my, the nerve damage that's in me. And he started me out down here and just started working his way up. And I think I'm at the full dose now. Okay? 
And it, it does help. That day you saw me at Walmart wearing my jacket in 95 degree weather. I'd gone without it for several days seeing if it was working. And I was in Walmart. She saw me. She said, what are you doing with the jacket on? I was like this, freezing. Okay? You don't have to take that kind of medicine, do you? No, you freeze naturally every day. Amen? Okay? I have to take it. I, don't, I tried to get, I tried to do without it. I can't. I, I'm probably stuck on it. I don't know what happened if that medicine ever went out. I don't know what I'd do. But I know the grace of God's always going to be there. Okay? That's how you do it. When you start measuring yourself against somebody else, remember, you both met at the same cross over the same dirty, nasty sins. Amen? Verse 4. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. The bones do one thing, skin does another, white blood cells, red blood cells, platelets do one thing, the kidneys do one thing, the lungs, the heart, all that stuff. Verse 5. So we, being many... Our one body in Christ and every one members one of another. What links us together? In the body, what, what holds the whole body together? Anybody know? Huh? Caleb? You know what? That's not bad. Tendons, ligaments, they're what connects the shin bone to the knee bone. And the knee bone to the thigh bone, the thigh bone to the hip bone, hip bone, back bone, back bone, shoulder bone, shoulder bone, neck bone. That's what ties them, it's the ligaments and the tendons. Okay? And I, I, don't know if you, I don't know if I showed this here or not. I think I did. I think that this may be the only place I ever showed it. What is it that joins muscle to bone? Is it ligaments or it's tendons, right? Tendons join bone to muscle. That's not an easy thing. Muscle is fleshy and bone is rigid. And, I, and I'm just going, I saw this one day and I'm going, man, that is it right there. Okay? It shows Christ even in our bones. Because what happens is the muscle, as it extends toward the bone, the muscle tissue begins to transform to be more like the bone. Meanwhile, the bone is sending out tissue that transforms from hard tissue to soft tissue to be more like the muscle and they meet in the middle and are joined together perfectly. That's Christ. He's the one who is both God and man joining us and God together. Christ is who joins us all together. Now, the deeper part of that, Rhinus option, you guys have been together how long? Seven years. That's perfect. Just end it now, okay? <laughs> we'll wait for year eight. Maybe you need a new, new start, okay? When you first got together, how much different was she than you? Right? Now how much? A lot closer? Lisa and I? Way different. 30 years later, a lot closer. It's because I learned to try to think more how she sees it. She's had to think more like I see it. Now, she's still Sweetie Pie. She's not me. I'm still me. I'm not her. But there are many areas in life that bind us together because we have learned to become the same with each other. Amen? Okay? So that's what keeps a marriage together. How many of y'all know that to be true? Okay? Same thing applies here. Same thing. There's some of us been around. Linda, you started coming here 75 Huh? 78? Okay. I was here in 74. Sterling came in 80, right? Rose, you came in 80, 89? Okay. And so there's several of us been here a long, long time. And then some of you guys just popped up one day. Like 
seeing moldy bread in the fridge going, where did that happen, okay? <laughs> so what has to happen is, instead of us making you turn into identical twins of all of us, do it our way, the life of a church is they will take in the new people and they will do exactly what that muscle and that bone does together. They will learn in many areas to become more like one another. That's good, isn't it? Okay? So you are in a process of learning us. We become in that same process of learning you guys. And over time, it binds us all together. And the devil cannot tear that apart. How easy is it to tear what did I say? Ligaments? Tendons? How easy is it to tear those things? Those things are, they're harder than bone. You'll easier break a bone than you will that bond of muscle and bone together. God's wise, isn't he? Boy, we know some stuff now, don't we? Amen? So, uh, verse 6. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given. See, everybody's got different grace in them. Everybody's got different grace. Same grace, but it's different in everybody. It works differently in everybody. And what that means is, there ain't a one of us that has any right to be here. We're not here by our rights. We're not here by our birth. We're not here because this is our church. We've been here 40 years and we ain't leaving. We're here by grace and nothing else. By the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy. Prophecy simply means what? Speaking what God said. Okay? Let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Or meant, Now, listen to me. I am, I have a lot of friends in the ministry. There ain't one of them like me. I don't want them to be. I want my friends in the ministry to be different than me so that when I listen to them, I get something out of them that I never got from me. Okay? I listen, I'll listen to John Uter. I'll listen to Reg. I'll listen to Lonnie Burks. I'll listen to all... I mean, guys just everywhere. I'll listen to them. God made them unique. God made them different. Okay? Don't compare preachers to each other. Don't do it. Don't, comp don't put us up against each other. Okay? Don't do that. Well, watch this. Verse 7. Or ministry. Anybody in this church can have a ministry. Okay? Anybody can. Everybody pretty much will. Okay? Because he's made us priests. It's like we were all born in the tribe of Levi. Every one of us, being, being Levites, then would have a responsibility somehow, some way, in the priestly order. We would have, there were some priests that tended to the ark, some to the tabernacle, some to sacrifices. There were some priests that all they did was carry out ashes. That's what they did. Okay? Who's to say which one? God is the one who determined, okay, I want the Kohathites to do this, and I want the... I want the Aaron to do this, and I want God is the one who's who said, I want you to do this, you do this, you do this. Okay? God did it according to how he knew them, according to what their abilities were. God gave them that ministry. Okay? So, here's, here's what I learned in ministry. Or ministry, let us wait on our ministry. You got a you got an itch in you that you just Boy, I mean, you just want to get out and do something for God. Okay? I get it. I've had people call me and say, well, I think I've been called to preach. Man, I think I just... What, what if I'm not... What if God called me to preach and I'm not doing it right now? God... And I always told them, you think God called you to preach? Yeah. It, it, you, want, you think God wants you to preach? Yes. When you start preaching, that would be God. He's the one that's going to direct you. He's the one that's going to give you the opportunity. He's the one that's going to give you the time... He's the one that's going to set you here and say, this is what I want you to do. Right here, right now, start talking. It's that simple. And remember, Israel never moved an inch until the cloud did. 
as wicked and rebellious as they were, every day for 40 years, they followed that cloud. They didn't have a choice. And God will take all that away from you and say, I want you to minister, but it's not now. It's not, it's not today. It's, it's, it's not time yet. Lisa will tell you, I struggled when we got married because my plan was, get married, head back to Bible college, I'm going to get my Bible college, and I'm going to get me a nice, big, fat church. And that was my goal. And we fought over it. And God hardened her heart so that she said, I'm not going anywhere. I don't think it's right. And I ain't kidding you, I, I hurt over that. And there was times that I wanted to get back in the ministry so bad, I couldn't stand it. And then finally, God said, now, Mike, you're going to go here and you're going to do this. Right here, right now. And there I was. And then God said, now, you're going to go here and now you're going to do this. And there I was. Okay? And you folks that are here visiting, you're here because I decided to wait on the Lord for what he wanted to do next. And that was the Watchman broadcast. Boom, there it was one day. Now do this. I went, oh, I can do that. That's cool. Can I do it every week? Yeah. Yeah. But I had to wait on it. I had to wait on that. And that killed me. Okay? But if God's in it, It'll show up just like that. Our ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth, on teaching. Or he that exhorteth, on exhortation. You know, even saying nice things to somebody, you can do it at the wrong time. Right? <laughs> I'm not even going to give examples, because they'll probably be too true, alright? Or he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. That means be a giver, do it discreetly, do it simplistically, don't ring your bells, don't tell everybody in the church how much you tithe so that you can put yourself above everybody else, so that you think you can have more sway in the church business than other people do. I have seen that. I hate it. I hate that stuff. Why? Our family tithes $3,000 a month this place here. I had, please will tell you, some of you guys know there was a family that tithed. They were outside of this church. They put in a lot of money every month. And we took it because, man, we're trying to put out DVDs and this and that and the other. And slowly but surely, I saw her start trying to reel me in. And make me say things that I wasn't going to say. And when it became very clear to her that I wasn't going to say it, they called and said, uh, take us off your mailing list. Well, we can, we can still send them. No, we don't want them anymore. And that was it. That was, that, that was gone. And I went, I didn't go, oh man, we lost all that money, wouldn't we? You know what I did? I went, Thank you, God. Because I knew what she was doing. She was using that money to pull my string. If you're going to give, just give and turn around and let it go. Amen? Who are you, who are you trying to please? I'm trying to please God. Don't worry about everybody else. Let God take care of it. Amen? Uh, or see, let's see. He, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. I'll forgive you this time. I'll never forget it. Just forgive people and be done with it. Amen? Now, here's, he's given you a list of, here's the body responsibilities. I'm going to run through this just kind of fast, okay? Here's the responsibilities for those of us. This would be, this would be to every member in the body, all right? So, number one, verse nine. Let love be without dis, 
simulation. Okay? If you're going to love, then love everybody. Go big or go home. Don't pick and choose in the church who you're going to love. That's, that's like picking and choosing which kid you're going to be nice to for the rest of their life. And the others, you're just going to let them go. Okay? Believe it or not, some parents live that way. Don't they? Don't we know that in today's world that some parents just pick certain of their kids and they treat them like little gods and goddesses and the other ones just do what I've seen it. I have seen it. Okay? So if you're going to love, then love everybody. Love them all or don't love anybody. Okay? Go big or go home. Number two, abhor that which is evil. Now, which part of the body should do that and which doesn't have to worry about it? Everybody. Who in here gets poison ivy? Do they have poison ivy in South Africa? Poison oak? Poison sumac? You don't want it. No, not poison snakes. <laughs> Leaves of three, leave them be, we say. There's a vine that grows in the woods out here. It's got three leaves on it. Sterling can rub them all in his face and chew them like tobacco and nothing to happen to him. I get, I get in their aura and I get rash all up and down my leg and everything like that, okay? They have an oil on them. I cannot let that touch me because I'll break out in this bad rash. It stays for a month and I hate it. I don't go in the woods. Until the leaves are all dead and gone. Then I'll go. When one part of your... There's not an area of my body that will not get infected with poison ivy. The whole thing will. If I get it here, I'll abhor it right here. I've had it under my nose. Oh! Okay? I've had it on my legs. I've had it on my tummy, on my armpits. Every part of my body hates poison ivy. <coughs> Likewise, everybody in this church are to hate evil. Without exception. If it's wrong, we ought to hate it. Even if we are guilty of it, we ought to hate it. That's how you know you're in the body. Amen? Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Likewise, this is for the whole body. This is not just for the preacher. Cleave to that which is good. That means be drawn to good things. Remember, what, God, what does God call good? It's holy. It's perfect. If God calls it good, it's good. Amen? Cleave to that. Verse 10. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love. Family is family. Blood is thicker than water. Amen? Okay, it's called natural affection. And I mean, I, I love my, my own blood, my own family. I'll be honest, I love them more than I do just about anybody else in this world. And that's how we ought to be with one another. Is we have the same father. Heaven's our mother. So we're all the same family. We ought to be kind to one another. Kindly affection to one another. That has the word affect in it, which means that when somebody is hurting, we're affected by it. All of us are affected by it. We're not going, well, they had it coming. I saw that coming a month ago. They, okay? That's not how we do each other. In honor, preferring one another. That means let them go through the door first while you hold it. Amen? That means do things for other people without them knowing about it. Not to other people, for other people. Do nice things to people without signing your name to it. Do it for the right reason. Do it because you love God. Amen. You want them to do it to you. That's the, that's the uh, love your neighbor as yourself thing. Num verse 11. Not slothful in business. Whatever business it is. Home business. Work business. Church business. Whatever, whatever area of life it is. Don't be lazy. Consider the ant, thou sluggard. Ants just get up every day, five o'clock in the morning, and go to work. Then they might stop and take a break every now and then. Then they go back to work. Be, don't be slothful. Fervent in spirit. Now, not everybody does. I was watching some of that service last night. Okay? That's not us. Okay? Okay? 
It was a little spirited, and some people are like that. And you go to you go to Kenya, boy, they can they can dance, and it's natural, okay. And I'm standing there going, yeah, this is fun. I ain't doing that, okay. You look like a fool doing it, but you can still be fervent in your spirit, amen. You're a Christian 100% of the time. Serving the Lord. Verse 12. Rejoicing in hope. This is why God made you had a bad day. He just wants you to have hope that there's a better day coming. Amen. Amen. Patient in tribulation. Oh, did I say that T word? <laughs> Continuing instant in prayer. You know what that means? Somebody says, will you pray for me? Stop right then. Put your arm around and say, you know what? Let's mean you pray. I have to do that sometimes because I'll forget. Okay? Be instant in prayer. Something going on you don't like, drop your head and pray about it. Somebody said something to you and made you mad, drop your head and pray about it. Somebody, uh, somebody at work you ain't getting along with and you're around them, stop and pray for them. Pray that God will save them. Give them the same spirit you got. Okay? Be instant in prayer. Every time you hear about something that troubles you, stop and pray. There ain't no law against it anywhere in this nation, on the job site, at school. You can pray anywhere and everywhere, lifting up holy hands. Distributing to the necessity of who? Saints. I believe in giving of our resources here at this church to people who are in need. Okay? We have strangers that will come by and ask us for help, and I believe in helping them. But, Church people first. That's my rule. Church people first. Okay? Here's the question. Distributing to the necessity of saints. Should I concern myself with why they have a necessity? It did not say that. It did not say that. Now, I'm not a fool, and some people are just stupid with money. Okay? That don't mean they can't get a little help every now and then. Okay? Yeah, we're, yeah let's be wise. Let's be good stewards of the Lord. I believe in that. Okay? But sometimes it's not my business why somebody couldn't pay their electric bill. Okay? Maybe we'll just pay it and let God worry about the next one. Amen? See, the more we start getting into everybody else's business, then it makes us busy bodies. Giving to hospitality. What does that mean? Put them in the hospital. Amen? <laughs> no. It means be hospitable to them. Buy them a Coke. Okay? Find something at a yard sale and give it to them. Don't ask them for money for it. Just be hospitable to people. Be nice. Bless them which persecute you. Now we're getting difficult. Bless and curse not. Do we believe persecution is going to come to God's people? You believe in that, don't you? How are we going to deal with that? Are we going to shoot them? Do you have gun control in New Zealand? Huh? We don't have guns really. There are a few that go out hunting and stuff, yeah. but not, not at home. You can't just walk around with a pistol like Clint Eastwood in the street, can you? We can. <laughs> Americans shoot first and ask questions later. <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> Wild West. When the persecution comes, are we going to shoot the guys that are persecuting us? Or are we going to do what the Bible says? I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure I know the answer to that one right this second, but the Bible said, bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. It didn't say shoot them. Okay? Blessed are the peacemakers. Huh? Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers. Look at her, she looks. <laughs> Smith! Blessing! Okay? I'm starting to like you foreigners. <laughs> Rejoice with them that do rejoice. Amen. 
That means when somebody wants to get up and shout during church, don't go home. Rejoice with them, amen. And weep with them that weep. Ladies, that's yours. Okay? Verse 16. Be of the same mind one toward another. Uh Uh-oh. Remember that ligament, muscle and the bone joining together? That's because they, at some point, on a few key issues, they were of the same mind one toward another. The muscle toward the bone, the bone toward the muscle. Reaching out to one another. Amen? That's how it's supposed to be. Mind not high things. Don't worry about your position in the church. Let God worry about that one. But condescend to men of low estate. That's why we wash feet here. Doesn't get any lower than putting yourself at somebody's feet and saying, Brother, may I wash your feet? Be not wise in your own Conceit. Conceited Christians. Lost people are sick of them. They're sick of you. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all IRS agents. That's an amen. That's an amen. Amen, I'll pay my taxes. Come on. You earned the income, didn't you? You drive the roads, don't you? You want the police to come when they call, don't you? You want 911 service, don't you? Pay your taxes. Put men in office that you think will lower them if you want to. That's all right. But pay the taxes. And if you earn the income, provide things honest in the sight of all men. Okay? We don't, as far as I know, Rose does it, get a copy of your W-2 and match it up against your tithing every year. As far as I know, Rose does it. Some, yeah, I know some churches that do. We don't. Okay? But, do you tithe your income? Do you pay taxes on your income? Who do you cheat? Verse 18. If it be possible, as much as life in you, live peaceably with all men. Even liberals. It's hard, isn't it? It's because they're so stupid. Right? It's hard to be at peace with stupid people. As much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. Who cheated you? Somebody cheated you, right? And you decided you were going to make them pay. You know what? Why don't you let God... Do you, are you seeing what I'm seeing here? Let God repay the debt. Let God repay it. You know what that means? You know what that might mean? That God will pay you on behalf of somebody else who cheated you. And God paid their debt for you. Because after all, He paid yours. Amen? Amen? Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Last verse. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Don't try to get back at people. It is not your place. It is not my place. It belongs to the Lord. Let God settle disagreements. Let God settle debts. Let God settle arguments. Let God be like Jacob and Laban. When Laban came after Jacob, 
saying, I'm going to kill everybody I see. They stopped right there at a place that they called Mizpah. Mizpah, they called it that. They heaped a big pile of stones and they said, this pile of stones here is going to be a witness between us. If I cross this line, meaning harm on your behalf, God will cut me down. If you do likewise, God will get you. So we're going to let this pile of stones right here separate us and we'll let God judge between us. That's wise, isn't it? How many arguments are there in the Bible? How many people got into it in the Bible? Abraham, Lot, Paul, and John Mark. Okay? Others in the Bible that they got into it, Saul and David. How did David handle it versus how Saul handled it? Are you Saul or are you David? David stood right over Saul and his guys said, David, you, sh you could kill him right there. You got him. David said, that's the Lord's anointing. I'm not going to touch him. And Saul was as wretched as could be. He's fixing to go see a witch. Okay? Saul would not have given David that same thing. But he decided to let God handle it. Boy, if we'll learn that, we wouldn't fight so much in our homes. We wouldn't fight so much in our church. We wouldn't fight so much in our marriages. And brothers and sisters would love each other. This would be a great world if we just let God handle it. We are His body. Let Him do it. Amen? Stand to our feet. I'm going to give out. I'm going to go home. Father, I speak as the head on behalf of this body in telling you, Lord, what you already know. That there's no chance in the world that we're going to follow every one of these perfectly. This is the best way for us. And yet, Father, we are going to fail it. So God, give us grace. Teach us these things. God, there's maybe somebody here tonight needed one part of this. The rest of it they're already pretty good at. Maybe another saw another part that they're deficient in and they needed it. And Father, so just give to each one of us as the body the grace that we need to do what you ask us to do, to do what we need to do, to do what we're told to do, to do what's right. Lord, it's your body and it's your responsibility to take care of this body. So God, we ask that you just minister grace to us, correct us when we're wrong, Feed us always. Give us far better than what we deserve. Because we love serving you because you're just very, very good to us. And we know you love us. So bless your people tonight. Bless your word in Jesus' name. All of God's people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you.